Hello, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, depending depending upon uh, from where you are joining us. My name is Professor Jihan Chobanoldo. I'm the McKibben and Dot Chair Professor and also the Director of M3 Center for Hospitality Technology and Innovation. It is our pleasure to welcome you to week five of the Post-Crisis Hospitality Management Certificate Program put together by the School of Hospitality and Tourism Management in the MoMA College of Business at the University of South Florida. Uh, as I have said, we are again starting with the pre-show interview. Uh, MoMA College of Business Dean Moez Limayem will be hosting Mr. Richard Gunsman, uh, Mart, uh, the president of the Columbia Restaurant Group. Before I invite uh, Dean Moez Limayem, I would like to show you a short video about the Columbia Restaurant. Our history is everything when it comes to this restaurant. This was built from scratch by my great grandfather, which started out as a small corner cafe in 1905. It feels exactly the same way and it smells the same way. When I look at a recipe, if it has garlic in it, I'll usually double it, maybe sometimes triple it. <laughs> I always say that chicken and yellow rice is kind of a simpler version of a paella. Onions, green peppers, garlic, some tomatoes, you brown your chicken. It's kind of one of those easy dishes that if you're having company over, you can prepare it, stick it in the oven, and 45 minutes later, you have a beautiful dish. <laughs> it always tastes better when it's here and I don't make it at home. <laughs> you can come to Ebor and a lot of people rep you know, think, oh, it's just Spanish food, but there's so much more to it. And as Ebor has evolved, it has become more of a cultural destination. People are moving their businesses here, which then helps all of the restaurants that are here in Ebor. I think when you put love in your food and you take pride in your restaurant, that alone makes a great restaurant. It's delicious if you guys want to take a bite. It's like really good. <laughs> All right, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Um, I'm Moaz Limayem, the very proud uh, Lynn Pepper Jardine of the USF Muma Calero Business. And wherever you are, our friends here from, I think 102 countries, more than 6,000. Uh, we're so happy to see you again in this fifth week. Wow, it's already uh, fifth week. But let me tell you, today is a very special day for USF is a special day for the Muma Cairo business, but it is a very, very special day for me. And you'll see why, because I have the honor and the chance to uh, uh, talk to one of my absolutely favorite people, um, a very, very personal friend and probably an incredible uh, member of our, uh, uh, of our community. Um, one that uh, I really do not exaggerate if I say he inspires me every single day because we're friends on Facebook and every time I go there, I just get inspired by him. Today, I am so honored to have with me the amazing Mr. Richard Gonsmart. I'm the one that's honored to be with you. Thank you, Richard. Thank you so much. I, I don't even, to introduce you to our 6,000 friends here, Richard, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> but, but let me just give you very, very quickly. So um, as, as we saw in this uh, video, Richard Gonsmart, I, I would say probably the, the caretaker of the, um, of the very famous, the landmark here in Tampa Bay, uh, the, the uh, Columbia restaurants. Remember? This is a fourth generation. It was created by Richard Grand, Grand, Grandfather in 1905. Richard has done an incredible job. And now he is, he founded managing 13 of the best restaurants we have in our area. Believe me, I go to restaurants and I know a good restaurants when I see it. And Richard's um, restaurants are just absolutely uh, second to none. Um, but that's the business side. Richard, I don't think that is, if you see any single award and you say the best 
visionary, the best businessman, the best philanthropist, the, the citizens of the year, the businessman of the year, you name it, Richard very, very justifiably received five Hall of Fames, everything. But more importantly, the human side of Richard. He is the most caring, the most um, generous, considerate, and thoughtful person and friend you can ever have. I tell you, our Tampa Bay region and community is much a place, much better place for us, for our kids, before because of my good friend Richard. Richard, thank you so much for joining us today. Really, thank you. Oh, well, it's my it's my honor to be with you always, Moses. I have a high respect for you. Thank, thank you. you for me. Thank you, Richard, and uh, it's always a treat to uh, uh, talk to you. Um, let me let me start, Richard, with this really pandemic that that took us all by surprise. Um, and I'm sure we took you by uh, surprise. But um, um, we talk, we always talk electronically and, and face to face. And what you have done first um, to your team, to your employees to your, during that pandemic, but also what you have done for the community is just unparalleled. I know I'm going to put you a little bit uncomfortable, but could you please tell us a little bit? Um, um, what, what the, the few things uh, that, that, frankly, I, it just, inspires me every day. Okay, I don't think we can hear you, uh, Richard. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, we can hear you now. It's good. Yeah, my phone started ringing. Oh, that's good. No problem. Uh, hey, Richard, he's a busy man. He's a busy man. So we'll take it. No problem, Richard. Don't no, worry. no, 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 no. I, um, you know, I, I think I saw this crisis coming. Um, I didn't know what the crisis would be, but I've been telling my nephew and my daughter for the last two years, that I promised they would see a crisis like the last one I faced in 95, and that I prayed I was here. You know, I look at history, history is so important in business. And my father always told me, learn the history. You think about a hundred years ago in 1918, when 50 million people died from the Spanish flu. Yes. What did we do? And back then, everybody was wearing masks and Tampa was decimated with deaths, just like we're seeing today. We've come back from that. It's what I realize the most and what makes everything possible for me are the people that work for us. So first thing, when we, we were told to shut down, we had to have a plan. And I had been planning beforehand. You have to foresee. I told my daughter we had to prepare a menu, a shorter menu. And she argued with me. We, why would we have to do that? I said, we're going to have to have a menu that will probably have to be disposable. And we have to not be able to do table side presentation. We may not have the staff. We'll have to have them distance into different stations. So when we shut down, we started working on that. And March 20th, I believe it was. Yep. And I'll never forget that day. You know, I, um, I, um, you have to listen to your instincts. And I believe in that early morning. And, and I had received the largest dividend check my company has ever given to me on March 1st. Mm -hmm. I didn't cash it. I put it in my door. I never told my wife that I had that. And I, I just had this instinct, something would happen. And came March 21st, which happened to be my birthday, I took my check and gave it to my CFO. This company has to have the funds in order to meet the needs of our staff. I, did, I stopped taking pay. I set an example. I went back to, to March 1st and did not take pay. I didn't ask anybody else to do that. Then my, my major staff then offered to uh, take in 50% uh, uh, pay cuts. We kept them employed. We kept them working. And what I realized is my, my team depended on me. We were feeding the equivalent of 9,000 meals a week to feed our families. 9,000 meals a week. Four, four meals a week Wow. To our, to our staff. We continued paying the, the 401ks. I was told I had to stop. My CFO said, I said, no, we're not. We have to show confidence and strength that they're more important than anything else. And we did that. We, we paid their full insurance where they may have contributed. And I shared that. And then what I did as well is I wanted my children, my daughter and nephew to understand the challenges people had. And I suggested we sell gift certificates and that those funds would go to, to fund the, the needs of our employees. And my CFO says, do you realize when those, those, those gift certificates are redeemed, we won't have the cash? I said, I understand that. 
But we'll be fine. Don't you think they'll spend more than whatever it was? Don't you think they'll respect it? We raised over two hundred twenty thousand dollars. Good for you. What what we were able to do? That my daughter and nephew read the stories that the that the, the staff nominated people who needed it and saw how much they depended on us, their job. So it's That's been a learning experience, you know, and it's one that makes me feel grateful. You know, I had communication. I worked with family-owned businesses for our beef, for our pork, for our shrimp that are caught in Montsecure, Alabama, our chicken from Alabama, Georgia. And they all called to check on me to see how we were doing. I checked with them. We worked with Gordon Food Service, the largest family-owned food distributor, mainline, and uh, they're in Michigan. They checked on me, and they kept on bringing us supplies. And I stayed current with every vendor. What I've learned 25 years ago, you have to be brutally honest. Sometimes it hurts. And I faced struggles that everybody said I would never, ever be able to, to pull off after my father died. And, and I found out that uh, by communication and being honest, you don't have to have a good memory. People will trust you. And you may know we were building a Sicilian restaurant and, and the uh, contractor, he says, uh, we'll keep on building. We're, we're going to continue working. And I know you want to expand your dishwashing room. We'll do that. We'll put a new roof on your restaurant, your lady. I said, you know, this is difficult times. You don't have to pay me till July. Wow. And I said, why would you do that? And this made me uh, tear up. He said, because you're Richard Gontwer. You're a man of your word. So true. And so so you know, true, Richard. What I learned in the Great Depression, my, great, great, my grandfather struggled and struggled. He only had a day he sold $12. And he tells his best friend who worked with him, Gregorio Martinez, another day like that, we'll have to shut the restroom down. This best friend came with $500 as life savings saying how so many people depended on, on him. Those that work for us, the community, and the same family been selling us milk for 112 years and been selling us bread for 102 years. We helped the community. So it was up to me now to learn from that lesson. But what he did was with a handshake, he borrowed $35,000 and he built the first air conditioned dining room. Innovative. First air conditioned dining room in Tampa Bay. And it worked. And so I have to have the same that courage and, and, and realize that the show strength to my staff, they didn't know you need to know the struggles I had. You had to know that I that they believed that they would be fine. So in all of our restaurants, we did some sort of work and we put them to work to help us. And when the governor allowed us to open again, I, I did not open. I didn't feel it was proper. It wasn't time. And I said, the governor says we can open. That's fine. But we're going to wait. We're going to see what the trends are, what has to happen. So we opened on uh, May 21st at Sarasota. And when we opened up on Sarasota that day, the city council voted to open up Lido Beach because the Columbia restaurant was open. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's incredible, uh, Richard. That is just amazing. You um, you learned um, lessons from your grand grandparents, but you are teaching us lessons uh, right now. You, you really are, um, 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 Richard. Let's say uh, you always bring, and I know you're so proud of uh, of your grand, grand, your father and your grandparents. And this is a fourth uh, generation uh, restaurant. So, uh, you know, um, unfortunately, and, and uh, here we always say, you've probably heard it, that um, any family business starts weakening after the first generation and toward the third generation it is gone i mean it is not the case for uh for gonsmart family i mean it's, it's just now you took it you ran with it it is stronger than ever what, what is the secret for all the people well, who are you know, in the, the family it, business it's having a love for what i do i started working in the summers at the age of 12 so i'm 67. Oh. and, and they, they ask am I, am I slowing down no i'm picking up steam yeah. I have to work hard. I have to set the example because I have to be the hardest worker in our company. I have to be ready and willing to work hours. I wake up, as you may know, three or four in the morning, and that's the time I yes. contemplate that future yes. and, and, and to prepare. And my daughters that you saw in the video, she's a graduate USF Business School. Yes, that's why she's so good, right, Richard? Right, that's why she's so good. <laughs> and, and she boasts about that experience. But, you know, but she, she understands that now, how, how it's not just a business, it's a family that, that consider um, us family, extended family. I, I'm not the one, it's them. Yeah. And, and we empower them to do that. And so it's been working. It's one of these things that, uh, and you know that we continue building the Sicilian restaurant 
and we opened up in the midst of this crisis with yes. the, the burst and we opened up 12 days ago wow. and it's been a great success in the people that said it's the first restaurant they've dined in since march because they trust us a woman their name is uh, uh, Jen, uh, 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 jenny campisi came to celebrate her 91st birthday saturday wow and she had not been out she says can we take a picture together and she takes her mask off, but you can't take your mask off. Your <laughs> I said, I'll hold my breath. So it's one of those prizes that they trust me because what we did, we took measures during the beginning years. We did deep, deep cleaning in all the restaurants to make um, the, our staff feel safe and to understand. You know, it's brought in the awareness of, of, of uh, sanitation, cleaning, proper handling of food. It's making us a better restaurant. We'll be a better company. We'll be stronger. Um, we'll make it through this uh, because I plan for this crisis. So, 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 Richard, what what are the things you do to uh, people trust you? I think that's really the key point. I mean, we we go there, we bring guests there, we trust you. Uh, but in times like this, people are worried, but they still uh, uh, go there and they feel good. I mean, even the ninety-one years old lady uh, took off her uh, mask there. So, so. What do you do to earn that trust? And how, if we if, tell these, uh, our friends here, 6,000, if we go now, what, what did you do in the layout and what are the measures that uh, you implemented, but when, when the client and the customer goes in, feels good and feels in good hands? You know, in the state of Florida, the governor's allowed 100% occupancy. We, we will not do that. We're running at 50%, 60%. We want you to have that so, uh, social distancing that you feel safe. And that's the one thing and, and the measures that we, we take to, uh, uh, to make that guest feel comfortable from the time they come in through the throwaway menus or the QR code. Um, it, it's just that sense that they feel, they see people going constantly cleaning up, cleaning after, and we, we instill that into the team. We, under, we understand the responsibility we have that we've earned and we have to, in order to maintain that, we have to show that every day. Wow. It's not an easy task, but uh, it's one that I'm proud to see that they've embraced and they realize how much uh, people respect what we're trying to do and provide for others. Uh, that's, that's so true, uh, Richard. Um, many of your awards um, reflect the one of the best visionaries in, in our times. Can you hear me now? It's good? No. no? Oh, better. Okay, good. So, so um, you are known, Richard, to be one of the best visionaries we know. That's true. So, in times in times of of this during this crisis, most people were trying to downsize. You actually did the opposite. You started a new restaurant, and that new restaurant now, the review says it's what one of the best restaurants in our area. The reviews are great, and there's a waiting list to try to get in. And we took the time at, at the Columbia Ebor, Florida's oldest restaurant and largest. We installed a state-of-the-art kitchen, I invest, I mean, a dishwashing system. I spent over eight hundred thousand dollars expanding the kitchen and putting in a machine to wash my plates with all new technology and water. And then a machine that's 20 feet long just to wash my glasses. If wow. ever there was a time that it was needed, it was that. You know, we thought we could do it in two weeks. It took us six weeks. Wow. And I'm so proud that you, when people go there, sanitation of the eating utensils and that which they, they will eat um, will be done with the highest degree of anybody. The person who works our machine is the most important person in my company. Responsibility, the sanitation. And that's the way I treat them. And so we've done that. We've expanded this restaurant. And, uh, we put a, an insulated roof at Eulalie and expand it um, in St. Augustine doing work in the kitchen and the floors. And, you know, you had to invest and show our team that we had confidence we were going to be okay. You have to share confidence. You know, my daily, I, I try to speak, stay optimistic. And all my posts are only going to be that of, of opportunity and goodwill. And, you know, I, and even I get down and somebody says, why, why are you sounding negative? Well, everybody has a down day. day. Yeah, I just course. had 10 minutes. Yeah. Writing about it was fine. I, I look at those opportunities and the vision opportunities that we have. You know, this, this opportunity now with the takeaway, wow, it's been huge. 
as uh, absolutely huge and the success is uh, is right there um, um, uh, richard so let's uh, what kind of advice and lessons learned um if i ask you from all this crisis and and now we're starting to see a little bit the uh, the light at the at the end of the tunnel with vaccines coming and uh, if there is one maybe because you're my friend i give you even two but don't tell anyone um, um what are the advice you give to all the restaurants managers and people from this industry that are listening to us from 102 uh, countries we did lose some people that they moved out of state but we took the opportunity because there's some great people out there that are waiting to be hired and i realized i have i've taken the opportunity to bring in a younger management team to go into that next department. I'm trying to hire the next Richard Gonsmart. I'm hiring the next chief financial officer, the next chief marketing officer, these 25, 27 year olds. And I was able to find a great hire that uh, a friend of mine that has a chain told me if you can get them, hire them. Because there was opportunities that they were looking for to work with a family owned business. So we're shoring up, we're preparing. We have to learn how to strategize and, and just send out our mission of what we're doing. Social media, it's a new world. When I told my daughter, she was a little too old. She says, I'm only 41. I said, what time do you go out? She said, well, I, I, I'm pretty tired around eight. I said, you're, you're over the cusp. We need to have those energized. But <laughs> so what we're doing is, is we, we, we're fine tuning the, 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 the menu. We don't have the larger menus that we felt we needed aren't necessary. You had to be able to control your, your labor because labor has been a challenge. You had to get the social distancing in the kitchen, the mask, and you have to follow through. I have to set the example. I had been around somebody that had COVID. And so I, I, uh, I went and tested and I quarantined myself for five days as I was told by my doctors. Um, I was fine, but I had to set the example. I had to be open about it. I could have gone to work. I said, I was near somebody that they, they're the only person, they don't know where they got it. Their wife doesn't have it. But I took that. And so I have to set the example. We have to set the example for those because they have to be they have to be cautious. They have to be a professional and keep others safe. And that's what the difference is. We have we have a remarkable crew. We have nearly 1500 employees now. And wow. yeah, and but it, and we don't have um, we've been very fortunate and knock on wood. Uh, no, that's great. Uh, Richard, we were talking um, earlier with some uh, of our colleagues about the trends, you know, the, the changes in, uh, in um, uh, guest um, behavior. So one of the things, for example, you mentioned, we see a lot of takeaways now. People will order and come and uh, take their food and eat it home. W what are other some of the changes that you are seeing now in the industry in general in terms of consumer behavior? Well, we're listening to the customers and they're going to tell you what they want. Yeah. And you have to listen to all of them. And so we're looking for those. Um, now, for the holidays, we understand that they want to uh, um, not have a Christmas party, but they would love to still have their family. And would we be able to cater it for them? And so we've come up with different menus that they could take a taste of the Columbia. And we'll even have them have a server that will test pop, uh, negative to serve for them. So they can have a feeling of the Columbia. We want them to feel safe, and that's where they feel safe at home or in, the, in their backyard, and that's what we're seeing. So we're listening to them, and, and by, by wanting to accommodate their desires and needs, um, they embrace us and they support us. The support that I see on, on social media um, is, is miraculous, yet there was a picture of a, I mean, with a radio personality, I guess it's anti-mask, and if we took a picture, uh, I, I didn't have my mask, I heard I was uh, being lamb blasted for it. I took it off for five seconds. You know, I, <laughs> I think your picture with the mask just didn't seem right. And it was, I was with him just about a minute. Uh, so I, I'm cautious. And, I'm, and Pam Bonney, our former attorney general, was there Saturday night. And um, she was at, uh, you know, sitting there uh, without her mask. And she stood up with it. We had our mask on. And she asked, can we take a picture? Yes. Without a mask? Yeah, I can take one without a mask for you. But <laughs> just briefly. So, you know, I, I'm, I, work, I understand what people feel. But it's, it's a responsibility that we as managers, as, as operators and owners, that we set the example for our staff. We follow the guidelines expected of us. Great, uh, great lessons, uh, Richard. 
what uh, what do you see now? We're talking about vaccines uh, that are as high as ninety five percent effective and efficient. Um, what do you see the future of the restaurants industry, short term, um, like in, in few months, but also longer term? Uh, what will be the long lasting impact of this pandemic, if any? You know what has the message has to go out is that there is better treatment for, for the COVID-19. And USF Medical, along with Tampa General, have a treatment that works within uh, five days for people with diabetics that are overweight or, or over 65. And so measures have been taken. I mean, the vaccine, I'll put my name on the line, yet people are saying they, they don't trust the vaccine. I said, I just don't know why. I'll be the first one to take it when I'm allowed to. And, and I have confidence that will give people confidence to feel better about going out. We're in a rough time. It's going to be a rough uh, beginning, first quarter in 2021. But with the with the two vaccines that are coming out with 95%, you're going to feel safe. And I hope there's a way to identify on, on, on your travel documents to show that you've had the vaccine. I mean, I'm first to, to take my, my flu vaccine, and I hear people don't take it. Why not? And I have a family member that doesn't want to take this vaccine because they don't know that it's proven. But with a record number of time uh, has gone into putting and making an effective vaccine that will protect us. We can't be afraid. We have to lead. And you put your name on and take that vaccine, but still practice caution. So it's going to get worse first quarter, but then you think after that things will improve? You know, I, I see where they've closed down cities and in and, and yeah. California. I read something that CNN posted yesterday that in Japan, there were more, hum, uh, more suicides last month than COVID deaths in the total year. Wow. So we have to get back to some normalcy. We have to give people hope. We have to have them an opportunity to go out and live life with caution may it be. They need to go to work. Children have to go to school. They have to practice safe distancing. And I know that there's some outbreaks in the, in the, the college because young people don't realize. And, and I've had a grandson that had it when he was at Florida State. And, um, he got over it because he was young. And that's not the answer. They have to practice. We have to teach the young people to be cautious and be because when they come around, older people they may bring it. We have a ninety-eight percent uh, survival rate, and many of those yeah. people that passed were very, very ill to begin with. But if they passed away with it, that was labeled. So I, I, I don't discount it. It's a serious disease, and we have to be serious in how we treat this, and we move forward as a company, as a city, state, and country. We lead the I way. Cannot agree with you more. Richard, how do you see, if I take you, just close your eyes now, we're in 30 years, what would the restaurant look like? You're a true visionary. So I am sure what you're going to tell me now will happen in 30 years. How do you see a restaurant in 30 years? You know, it's, it's going to become more expensive. We're, we're always trying, we're upgrading our software programs right now for for our, for our inventories, et cetera. And you have to always be on that cost and you have to continue reinvesting. I commit 50% of our income to reinvesting back into our units, into our people. It's important. You know, you're gonna see uh, uh, the wages going up. It's gonna be difficult. You're gonna see the fast food McDonald's where they get kiosks. So you're gonna eliminate those people taking orders. Just like when you used to go through a toll, toll booth, you used to have to pay yeah. Now that doesn't exist. So, you know, it's it, what worries me is that we're leaving work for people that maybe can't do other things. Oh, that's that, that's what bothers me. When I see countries that they have people working, it's my goal is to keep people employed. I don't have a desire to eliminate people. I have a desire to make it a better, the ability to do a better job. The way we get rid of our waste, we put a machine in that's a somat, chews up all hard, all the bones and shells and and everything, and it, it recycles the water, reduces it by 80%, and it comes out of the, of, of the slurry into my dumpster, completely dry, reduced by 80%. It's safe for, for compost, for landfill. That's what we have to do. The owners have to reinvest into what's going to make our planet better and safer. So we have to look and see things. That's, I'm looking always for that technology that's out there ahead, and I, I'm testing equipment constantly. And uh, we can't be afraid. So in 30 years, I won't be here. 
but I hope that the Columbia restaurant will still be making our 1905 salad the same old way and that we haven't taken shortcuts like we did over the period. And that was how I, re, re, I brought the Columbia back in 1995 by doing things the way they were done in the 30s, all fresh vegetables, working with families that know us and that we know them. Their, their name is as important as my name. And that's, uh, I want to be able to sleep at night knowing I've done the best I can to help my community, to help my staff, to help them realize dreams. That's the first thing I always ask somebody, what is your dream? How can I help you make your dream come true? They become doctors. They've become attorneys. They've become even a mayor. And they've won Super Bowls. Uh, I look at that, and, and I think that's what we're here. We each have the ability to inspire somebody. And you don't realize the lives you changed. And somebody the other day called me a light keeper. Or, I'm not sure. But we have to be aware that it's not us. There's the people around us that we have to worry about. If we worry about them, they'll take care of me. Richard, I, I couldn't believe the time is up. This is just incredible. We could go for for hours. And, and uh, I hope for all our friends here, the 6,000 plus listening to us from 102 countries, now understand when I say we have a remarkable person today with us. Uh, this is why, Richard, um, your family loves you, your staff loves you, your customers love you and your friends and your community. Thank you so much, my friend, for everything you do to change so many lives and to inspire us every single day. I am so honored to call Richard Gonsmark my friend. Thank you so much. Best of luck for everything you do. Thank you. I've, I've enjoyed many of the comments you've posted, the people have posted. It's heartwarming. And and I'm going to go back now when I go to work now and tell them the wonderful time I had with you. Thank you for including me today. Thank you. Thank